Ja on rekord tri. Thank you, CD. Why should I thank you? You've thrown a lot of us guys. <laughs> No, 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 no. You, you, you are being unfair because what accountability, CD? You arrested me. I came to court. That's accountability. I came to court. Hello, my name is TD Madia, Eyewitness News Associate Editor for Politics, coming to you live from Nazareth, where we are covering the ANC's policy conference, the sixth policy conference. We're speaking to different political players about what they expect to come out of this conference, what they think is still wrong, and what the ANC needs to fix. I say, in terms of expropriation, one of the things that we left to report back is that, for example, as the Minister of Human Settlement, I have expropriated without uh, compensation. And I don't think many people know that there are laws that allows us to do that. So you've got an ailing economy, unemployment is an issue, crime is an issue, um, healthcare is an issue, the state of women and children in the country, many, many issues. But then this governing party in and of itself is an ailing party, right? The ANC's state of being is precarious. They themselves say that they are vulnerable. And so he deals with that as well. He tried to deal with that as well in his speech a little bit earlier. Joining me at the moment is Mama Loko Kubai. I did say that she'll come on board. We'll chat a little bit about her. And you know, interestingly enough, uh, as she joins me, Good afternoon. Hello, Good afternoon. welcome. Thank you. As she joins me, interesting enough, I always think about the president of the ANC saying a young woman is needed. And I see one here. Mind you, a lot of other members in the ANC speak about a young woman being needed to be second in command going forward. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, your sense of the conference, the last conference I came to in 2017 was not this. This almost feels like a sad, sad case of a conference like the ANC had to force itself to try it's like you guys didn't even want together to deliberate over the state of your organization and the country and the way forward I doubt that we're actually excited to be here we haven't met we, we haven't come together obviously over time I think people are used to controversies and the fact that there are no controversies <laughs> it sounds like there's no there's, excitement it's no, not controversy there is, there even is though excitement. you're saying it's dull no I think at the beginning there's there's life now I mean uh, it's the commissions. To, yeah, we've, we've, we've adopted the credentials there's adoption of the uh, program remember that has not had done um so within 15 minutes like we do uh, we've adopted like that. Um, <laughs> it's such a trend yeah no even SACP did um, oh, yes. and then we 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 also moved into the rules of conference so there's there's liveliness in terms of that we're going to start receiving the reports that will be presented in in, in plenary hours we'll do it in the commissions um so it's 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 it has started the difference between a, a, a December conference and this one, this one is about policy, it's engagement. So even the delegates who come from NC understand the nature of this conference, how it is. It's about ideas, it's about engagement. And even now, you'd see that the provincial leaders are trying to make sure that their delegates are going to commissions, they're splitting them. So it's not like your normal one where there would be groups that are saying, I'm supporting this one, I'm following this one. So that is not happening I can't here. accept that because you and I both know that this is a step towards that. And and that the politics of the next conference will never not be involved in this conference. But that's a conversation for another for day. Fact, you but know? at least we I'm are happy because this is what we want to see from where we're sitting as leaders. Would so want this is the see, template that you want? Would want to see this type of a conference where it's focused on content issues rather than being distracted. You know, economic transformation was a major talking point at the last conference. It almost feels like a second thought, an afterthought in some instances. And this in part because something called Step Aside was adopted in, in December 2017. And members feel very strongly for or against it. And when members of the media speak to ANC members about it, they come out and they speak really loudly about wh what they think needs to happen around Step Aside. And one kind of, I think, geez, the last time around, they spoke a lot about what needs to happen around the nationalization of banks, the Reserve Bank for instance, the issue about land. Those were key issues. In fact, the Commission for Economic Transformation, that commission 
was one of the packed commissions at the conference, if I remember well. And here today, you're hearing people going, I need to be part of organizational renewal. Is it a worrying thing to see people more focused on this one issue over the other? What is your, your sense of what delegates think is important about the way forward, charting the way forward? No, look, if you, you, you look at the program and how we've done even previously, um, what we do first, you'd have all commissions discussing organizational renewal. Because we understand that you've got to have a better organization to be able to fulfill any other dream that you have. So that would be across. All commissions will have that conversation. Has um, issues around economy toned down? I don't think so. You listen to all the speakers. I mean, the president touched a lot about economic issues. You listen to the president of Kosatu speaking. You listen to SSCP um, uh, General Secretary speaking, you hear that the economic issues remain the major part of what is, is concerning everyone else. Um, from where I'm sitting, the, the, we're we still a bit worried. We hope we got a bigger room on economic issues because as I get in, I talk to delegates. Everybody's engaging around economic issues. Others are already saying, this is my suggestion, this is my input. So you can imagine even People have brought in written submissions already. I mean, I had to get some of the scribes to say, okay, come here, come and take. Some people are saying, no, we might not have enough time in the commissions, but I've made a written submission and I've got it here. So I'm comfortable with, with that because I'm, I'm already seeing that delegates are already engaging. What we would want to see is a spread across, not one commission being focused on, because the issues around security as well are important. The issues around social transformation are important. So those commissions should be equally attended. And that's why the appeal this time, because we've learned previously, the appeal was that provincial leaders need to make sure that we spread across delegates in terms of ensuring that they are in all commissions and they're fairly represented and the views of the provinces can be covered in those areas. Now, the issue of um, whether the, the issue of step aside will take center stage. Remember, when we came out of conference, um, this is one of the things that the conference said go and renew. So it's one of the things that have been done by the NEC in between conference. This is the first time we're gathering and delegates are asking questions, which is correct for them to ask questions because it's their organization. And we'll have to reflect and give answers. For example, one of the things that we're picking up is that a messaging, because we've not had a provincial, we, we didn't have a national general council, and regions and provinces would not have general councils yeah. where we normally communicate in terms of progress and everything. So you are finding a gap between us and members where, for example, people don't even know that in the step-aside guidelines, there's a review process. So if I feel I've been undone fairly, I have a right to go and approach um, a structure to review my step aside if it has been long. So we find in that and will be clarified. We don't think that once the clarities are coming, it will be an issue that it's, it's, it's so hot in, in this manner. It's just the issue of understanding and being able to communicate to delegates. You were on 702 earlier in the day. You spoke to my colleague, Clement Manyatela. You spoke about how it's not practical, the ideas of nationalization of the Reserve Bank. Um, expropriation, I think, to some extent. You said that some of these things are just simply not practical. How do you expect NC members who, who pretty much tasked you with this, finding a way towards this, you know? You speak about step aside being part of renewal, being the task that you were given. Here's another issue that you were given, and you just come back and you say, it's simply not practical. How do you explain that to members? Look, it's, it's not the issue. Remember part of the resolution you go and and look at the resolutions that are there you implement, where there are challenges, come back and report back. So we would have reported during the General Council where we are, where there are challenges would have to give updates. So in the commissions will give definitely updates. Part of the issue, for example, on the land that we're giving, not that there's been, we've not been able to do, we've done quite a lot in terms of the land, by the way, um, in terms of establishment of the AMC to look in the transfer of the land, fast tracking of the redistribution of land in terms of land claims, um, allocation of land in terms of human settlements. Almost 14,000 um, hectares were given to us uh, to be able to do a human settlement, build houses, but closer to where people are working so that we close the special, uh, apartheid special landscape. And then again, I say in terms of expropriation, one of the things that we we'll have to report back is that, for example, as the Minister of Human Settlement, I have expropriated without uh, compensation. And I don't think many people know that there are laws that allows us to do that. And so we'll municipalities. Give, mm. Yes, and municipalities. So we will give the feedback. But the issue of the amendment of the constitution, that's the only thing that we couldn't do. And it's precisely because we do not have a two-thirds majority. One is that we differ with those who are in parliament in terms of what they want. The others will say to us, no, 
We want the expropriation, but the land must be owned by state. Others will say, no, it's a free market, leave it. And we're not agreeing on that because as NC was saying, if we take back the land, it must go in the hands of the people. So that's where we differ. And the Section 25 amendment has not been done, as we know, but the expropriation bill has been done. Other programs that have been implemented. On the Reserve Bank, we acknowledge that the mandate was saying to us, go and nationalize the Reserve Bank because uh, South Africa is one of the few countries that has um, private ownership. Now, the challenge there, what we'll be giving as a report back to our delegates and our structures is that when you look at the ownership of the Reserve Bank currently, it's got domestic private shareholding and also international private yes. shareholding. Yes. Now, part of the issue is that if you are to take that, you can't with international private shareholding because we have signed treaties that makes us obligated to certain uh, way of op operating in terms of ownership. Now, when you are to expropriate, you can't expropriate without compensation or you can't take the shareholding without compensation. So you've got to compensate them. And what we learned out of the process is that immediately we took the resolution, the prices of those shares went up. And part of we are coming back to conferences to say, is there a need for us as the NC to sort of look at how we take policy decisions, especially on what I would call market sensitive decisions. Corporates, when they take such decisions, they have a way of dealing with it. It's not public until it's ready so mm -hmm. that it doesn't influence the prices. And this is where we are. And we'll give a report back to delegates and get feedback from them whether they are happy or not. But the issue is that we had to make a decision. Do you take the money, excessive money, to go and pay for this private shareholding and nationalize the Reserve Bank? Or in the environment where we are, we were affected by COVID and the fiscal was not doing well. Take the money and focus on the services that you needed, dealing with COVID. So that's the reality that we've got to come mm -hmm. back. It's not that it was not implemented because there was no willingness of doing okay. that. So there is an explanation of what. And this is not the only resolution, perhaps even over time, yeah. over years, where ANC would not be able to. The trend is that where you ha have difficulties, you'll go back to conference and say this is, and then the conference can say, no, 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 we understand the explanation, but we reaffirm the need for us to nationalize, and therefore you can take the decision forward. Mm. Mamluko, talk to me about the role of the subcommittees in holding the deployees of the ANC to account, or even the relationship between the two. Do you find that you have some sway, some influence over how they implement NC policies? Are you happy with the way they carry out the vision? Are they carrying themselves out in line with the vision that is set out by the NC as far as policies are concerned? Look, what we, we do as a subcommittee, and we know that I'm fairly not really old in terms no, you've, of the process. No, you relatively new. I recognize it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure so, you have a vision about yes, what you want it to yeah. be. What, what we want, to, what we are doing, and actually because what we have been doing over time, is where we have engagements in terms of ensuring that we can try and, um, we, we can try and make sure that comrades come and explain where there are challenges, we look at the policies, where there are amendments, but we do monitoring of what needs to be done and pressing issues, we deal with them. Um, can we do better? Yes, I do believe that we can do better um, in terms of the regularity of the meetings from our side as well, as also just making sure that we keep track of, track of the issues. But major part around the monitoring and evaluation, NC had taken a decision that will establish a full functional monitoring and evaluation because as subcommittees, we do not have full-time staff that are looking at implementing so you based on the program what the issues you pick up, where you are able to do. So there isn't much capacity to be able to even verify when the colleagues are doing it. So we're utilizing even from the state because fortunately I'm also in the chairperson in the state. So I'm able to see, okay, these are the issues that are burning that we need to take to the parties to go and review. So that's what we can do. I'm trying to wrap up. I've got two very mm. quick questions. Yeah. There's been lots of criticism around. I'm going to talk about ESCOM, obviously, some of the mm. SOEs and Praveen Godan. With even NEC members saying they're not happy with the subcommittees and whether or not the subcommittees call deployees and say, explain things to me. Was that fair criticism for people like Nomvula Mokonyani to come out and say the subcommittees of the ANC are not doing their jobs? They're not calling deployees to our council to explain. They were at the time obviously speaking about South Africa being plunged into okay. stage six load shedding and the ANC not having a clue that was coming. No, I, I don't think that it was a fair um, issue. We consistently have engagements um, with um, the deployees, including Comrade Pichi, even when the issues around uh, the load shedding happened. Yes, would, because you can't want to micromanage deployees, that's another issue. So there's a difference, ours is around policy. 
uh, where there are policy gaps and all those things. So we would do that from a subcommittee point of view. But if it's things like those in terms of planting, the Secretary General's office can call. It's not shifting responsibility, but it's for people to understand the role of the subcommittees mm. in terms of holding where we engage, look at the gaps and all that. But we did have a conversation with Comrade PG. We understood where the issues reflect, where we are unhappy about, and those things. And NEC eventually had a discussion. And just before I let you go, I said earlier, they said they want a, a young man or woman <laughs> to take the NC forward because the succession conversation is part and parcel of what's happening and what will play itself out here, whether you acknowledge it or not, it is a fact. Your name has come up as potentially a young woman who might be worthy of being the next person to become deputy president of the NC. My question for you, and it's something that I hear people asking all the time, what do you then bring to the table? The people who are supposedly vying for it will say, I've consolidated this province and that province. I've got support here. I've got this base, this constituency. One would ask a Mamelu Kukubai, one, what is your reaction to your name being thrown in the hat? Secondly, what do you bring to the table? The nomination process has not been open. It's just about yes. to open. No, no, no. It's not just open. about. It's not open. Therefore, anyone who says, I've got this, I've got this, I don't think it's realistic. Um, that's, that's where I'm sitting. Um, nominations will tell us whether who has numbers, who doesn't, uh, who is supported. Even myself, those who say that we're requesting you, because there are people that can say that there are people who have approached me to say, would want to support you. Can you raise your hand? And my response was that if I'm approached by structures of the organization to raise my hand, I will raise my hand. But you guys go back and work and make sure that you fulfill that responsibility and make it possible for me to raise a hand. Okay. Oh, I must make it possible for you to raise your hand. Thank you so much. That's Mamulu Kubai, ANC, Economic Transformation Committee, Subcommittee Chairperson, speaking to us from NASREC, where we will be bringing you daily updates on what's happening here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tuning in. That's it from myself, CD Madia, with the Eyewitness News Political Update. <laughs>